Colorado begins to see the benefits of social distancing. COVID-19 cases are climbing, but not as fast. As hospitalizations surge again, we seem to see a portion of people getting sick, really sick, really quick, and needing long stays in the hospital. That has the state looking for other beds that could become hospital beds. A 96-year-old Coloradan who beat COVID-19 wants to offer the rest of us hope. We press the governor on what happens when rent is due next month and people don't have paychecks. Getting grandma groceries through some smart social distancing. Finding beauty in our quiet city. And my most unfortunate haircut at home. Come on into my place. This is next. What we're doing might be working. This big statewide experiment to keep our distance from each other and make it harder for COVID-19 to jump from person to person. The state researchers studying our actions and the virus's reactions said for the first time today that they are seeing some signs of progress, as in the closure of bars and restaurants a few weeks ago may have at least slowed the rate of spread. So it would appear that we have avoided that horror show scenario that was laid out by Governor Jared Polis, the idea of how many Coloradans we might lose if we did nothing. But they say it will not be until next week that we're really going to know whether the bulk of our social distancing, that stay home order, is having a real impact. We're hoping that these social distancing measures are significantly reducing the effect of r naught here in our state. So when you saw that it was spreading at, you know, one doubling every 1.6 days and sounding the alarm bells and, and talking about that scenario where 30, 40, 50,000 Coloradans could lose their lives, that was if we did nothing, if we went around business as usual, we kept uh, hanging out together, having parties, going to bars and clubs. Through those initial measures and with the traffic proxies that you saw, it likely reduced the social context in the 50, 60 percent range. We're hopeful that once the stay at home rolls on, that's more in the 70 to 80 percent range. So the effect of R naught will be significantly lower because of these steps. Doctors are still expecting that surge of patients that is going to strain the state's capacity of ventilators and hospital beds. And so, as such, the state is continuing to look for more beds in hotels and dorms that are close to critical care hospitals, stuff that could be used as a step-down facility as people begin to recover. And the governor also warned today that it is highly unlikely that students are going back to school classrooms by the end of this spring. Let's talk about the state of the fight in Colorado right now. We know that 51 of our neighbors have died as of Sunday's count. It was an increase of four overnight. Four 414 people have been hospitalized. That's up from 326 people on Saturday, the largest single day increase in the hospitalization number that we've seen. In all, Colorado has 2,627 cases of COVID-19, about 15,000 people tested. And as always, got to remind you that there are many, many more cases out there than that. But these are cases that were not severe and never got tested or just were never found out in the process. Denver has the most known cases, 465, and half of those people are under the age of 50. We continue to ask the state health department for hard numbers of how many Coloradans have recovered. They are not yet ready to provide those. So what we are left with are anecdotes of encouragement, like that of Anita Hernandez. I should mention to you, she is 96 years old. We talked with Anita and her daughter this morning through their bay window. Anita started feeling sick back on March 17th. Two days later, she was at Porter Adventist, and that's where she tested positive for COVID-19. Her family was obviously fearing the worst considering her age. They put her on oxygen, and then Anita started to feel better. Doctors eventually sent her home. How are you feeling and how are you doing? I'm doing good. This is a good word. Yeah. Why is it important to hear your mom's story? To give other people hope. You know, that is, it's not a death sentence. Anita spent six days in the hospital, hospital and her family told us they have faith that she will make a full recovery. The rent is going to be due for millions of Coloradans here in the coming days, and we've heard that some landlords are not in a forgiving mood even if they know that people have lost their paychecks. The governor today warned landlords against making what he called hollow threats of evictions. He was asked about the topic by our Steve Sager. 
it's taken a financial toll. Mickey V's roommate, Amber Little, on the left there, she called our newsroom today concerned. She says their landlord in Inglewood has told them they have to pay the rent, even as Amber is temporarily off the job and her husband's hours have been cut. They, they work, you know, in, in, in the restaurant industry. I have a dollar to my name. Yeah, and, and, you're, and then you're going to come to them at the end of the time and say, well, we want this money. They say their landlord threatened, if you don't pay, you'll be evicted. A threat the governor today said is rare and at this point, useless. That is generally a hollow threat right now. They're not likely to have any law enforcement agency actually enforce a conviction right now. It's true, law enforcement has generally vowed not to carry out evictions unless there's a threat to public safety. But we understand this is an unprecedented time. Michelle Ling is the spokeswoman for the Apartment Association representing landlords. She says nearly 34% of the metro area rents the average monthly rent, $1,500. Um, there's a lot of uh, housing providers out there who are willing to work with uh, residents who are finding themselves in really tricky financial situations right now. But she says you have to remember tough financial times work both ways. 49% of landlords in the metro area have four properties or fewer. They call them mom and pop landlords in the biz, not the big corporate types. And big or small, Ling says, They've got bills too. A housing provider can't pay their employees who also have to pay their rent. Uh, they can't pay their uh, vendors and they can't pay their mortgage. So this should be a good reminder. If you have the money and you're able to do so, please pay your rent on time because Ling says that a lot of landlords are gonna use those resources to help other folks who can't pay. And if you cannot pay your rent, the Apartment Association cannot stress enough that you should contact your landlord, even if you're afraid of talking to them about it. Many of them are willing to work out a deal with you, maybe tack on a little bit extra to your rent for the rest of the year. Uh, it's just gonna be an, kind of an influx situation, Kyle, as this all goes on. Yeah, you certainly hope that if there's people who have the means to pay, that that money will be used by some of those mom and pop landlords to help lessen the strain on other people. And uh, the, my takeaway is just start that conversation with your landlord. And if your landlord's first move is don't pay, we're going to evict you, then say, yeah, I talked to the governor. The governor said you're not going to do that. Now what? Let's work something out. And the governor actually said today, hey, let us know if that's happening to you. He wanted to wanted the public to notify him if that's going on. I'm not sure how you exactly you get the governor's ear, maybe tweet at him, but let the government know if something like that is happening. You always just tell your neighborhood newsman like Steve Staker, he'd probably get the job done as well. All right, thank you, Steve. Yeah, that works. Tonight's next question comes to us from a viewer named Joshua. So I had a street sweeping season starting in Denver on Wednesday. Joshua wanted to know if everybody who is parked at home, like you're supposed to, is gonna get ticketed if they don't move their cars for street sweeping. So Joshua, the city is gonna give people a break. Street sweeping is gonna begin for the year on April 1st like it always does, but the city of Denver committed to us that they will not be issuing street sweeping tickets for a minimum of 30 days on this. Denver, of course, would still like to clean the streets. They say it helps to clean up the air to get the dust and the, the, dust and the dirt up and so forth. So they say if you can move your car, please do. And just as a reminder, Denver will send you reminders about street sweeping in your neighborhood if you sign up on the, the website listed there on the screen. We've heard a number of concerns and complaints from people who say that they are being forced to work even though their workplace is not essential or critical. It's a good time to remind employers that even if your business is essential or critical, or you feel that it is, you still don't have to make your employees come to work if there's ways for them to work remotely and such. Take the state legislature. Lawmaking is considered critical, yet legislators are at home right now. And when they return, they plan to address that specific complaint about workplaces. Here's politics guy Marshall Zellinger. Mr. Gregorio, please call the roll. Your state legislature was supposed to come back to work today. Baisley, excused. Benavides, excused. Bird, excused. Some did. Larson. The majority of them did not, and that was by design. With nine present, 56 excused, the House does not have a quorum. Even though lawmakers are considered critical and allowed to go to work under the stay-at-home order, they won't, 
at least until Thursday. If this were a snowstorm and it were unsafe to be here, uh, we would wait to, to be here. Wait, what? One year ago, when the bomb cyclone hit, Democratic Senate President Leroy Garcia kept lawmakers working. We have to get the job done. That's a Marine spirit. I've definitely learned from my past. People need to adhere to the advice that is being given by health officials, physicians, others who are experts in this arena. My daughters are doing their cello lessons on Zoom. Republican Senator Owen Hill, who wanted the Senate closed during the bomb cyclone, wants the legislature back at work now, even if it means changing the rules to allow remote participation. We should at least have the opportunity to address issues that come up, and we can't do that if we're if we're an adjournment. When the legislature fills these seats again, there's likely to be a new focus on bills to fix issues uncovered in the last few weeks. We're hearing from the attorney general that there's price gouging that's happening across the state of Colorado. Coming back to work will also mean having a say in how Colorado recovers. One of the concerns out there is the federal stimulus money. If we as a legislature aren't open for business, the governor would have huge amounts of authority to spend that money however he wants. If you were wondering when coronavirus becomes political, I think we've hit that area. Uh, Republican Representative Patrick Neville wants to do a check on public health departments in the future, perhaps legislation that would limit the power of health departments and what they can do, which would come with uh, fines and perhaps jail time. In worst case scenario, he wants legislative oversight. Democratic Representative Alec Garnett wants to look through all of these executive orders done by the governor and see which of these provisions, Kyle, might be necessary long term and not just in emergency situations. It might be good to look back and at all of our lives and see what we could adopt from this period of time. All right, thank you, Marshall, appreciate it. I, I'm starting to think that maybe Colorado is getting the hang of the social distancing thing. We invited you to send us photos of people doing it poorly, and we got a ton of photos of people doing it well, like getting grandma her groceries when she doesn't live on the ground floor. Oh, you want that now? <laughs> Here, Caitlin and Kyle Claren got groceries for their grandma who lives in a 55 and older community in Lakewood and they didn't want to go into her building where those older folks live and put anybody at risk so they got a bucket and rope to hoist stuff up to grandma. That's one year old Carter on the ground overseeing the operation. So we will take all of your examples of social distancing, good, bad, and otherwise. Email them to next at 9 newscom or use the hashtag HeyNext. Did you have a good weekend? You're thinking, what day is this? A lot of people have been saying that lately, you know, because some of us are working from home and the days blur together. Uh, some of us are, are out working and wish that we could be home and the days kind of blur together. And, you know, some of us want nothing more than to just return to a, a normal work schedule. And as we sit around, the days blur together. I think a lot of it is because people are tired. You know, I think a lot of people are tired physically and some people are tired emotionally. And for some people, it's both. And I wish that I could tell you that it seemed like we were within sight of the end of the great distancing. But when we talk to the doctors and we talk to the health experts, the consensus is we are quite a bit closer to the beginning of this than we are the end. And I know that people are getting antsy at this point. So we're going to have to get creative in every sense of that word, creative to fight boredom, creative to fight off financial ruin for a lot of families and creative in the fight against the virus that is still inside of our communities, just waiting for us to let our guard down so it can get at us. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to wait. Today is Monday. I hope you had a good weekend. We're getting a rare look at Denver without all her people. I actually did go out there with a purpose. Photos showing the beauty in our city's empty streets. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor viral pandemic stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. And Colorado asked if I would pass along everyone's appreciation. Next.
Postal workers, if you have not heard it lately, Colorado appreciates you. Next viewer named Catherine took the mic for our nightly shout out. Says postal workers like her brother have been putting in long hours to keep us connected and asked that I send a statewide thank you. Another viewer, Bradley, spotted some love for postal workers and sanitation workers down by the Pinery in Parker. So we've got this huge stack of your suggested shout outs for the people who are keeping Colorado running. We will do one each night, but I want to do something different tonight. I would like to hear from those essential workers who continue to work day in and day out to keep our state functioning. What can we at home do to make your jobs easier. Text me and let me know and I'll share it statewide. 303-871-1491 is the answer. Essential workers, what could we do to make your lives easier? Hello there. We're just about through this Monday and we had a mix of clouds and sunshine today, even a few thunder showers on the eastern plains. But up high, it looks more like winter than spring. Light snow showers still going on over the northern and central mountains where temperatures topped out in the 40s and 50s today. Denver at 58, 68 in Lamar, 64 in Pueblo. We've got high pressure coming in for 48 hours, so a nice warming trend ahead of the next batch of moisture, rain and snow showers to close out the week. Powerful thunderstorms moving toward Omaha, Wichita outside of Lamar and Burlington, but not a lot of moisture left over for Colorado skies will clear tonight. A little push of fog for the far eastern plains and a few leftover snow showers up over the northern mountains later tonight. Partly cloudy, 35 degrees, still the chance of a shower early and then we clear. We've got sunshine in mid 60s tomorrow. Beautiful day coming up both Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures will soar above average. Chance for rain and snow, cooler weather for Thursday and Friday and then a nice weekend warming trend and let's do what Jose Antonio does and just let's all of us just hang in there together. Denver all emptied out is eerie. Can't imagine many people have ever seen it like this. This is almost like a super priceless moment in time and we're never going to be able to go back and we're never going to have these moments that we're passing now ever again. Scenes from a silent city. Next. Open my email to see some striking photos from a, a next viewer named Renee Martin. She wrote that she was moved by the silence and the stillness in our stories about Denver streets, so she decided to go out with appropriate social distancing to take some of her own pictures. I feel like I captured a 
something super amazing. We actually drove all over downtown and down Broadway to take pictures of Denver. It was quite beautiful, but still super sad, and that's, I think, what I wanted to capture in the pictures. My name's Renee, and this is my daughter, Eliana. Um, we went out to go take pictures Friday night. I wanted to capture the stillness in Denver and how empty it is, and, and just the vibe of, of what's going on with everybody, and just the, the fear, the nervousness, the loneliness, and the emptiness, but still there's a piece of hope. And if you look at some of the pictures, there's these signs out front of the building where they say, temporary closed, but we'll be back. And I think just seeing that was really inspiring. I have my hopes and dreams set up to do more outdoorsy stuff and hopefully get to see the people come back to Denver and fill the streets and not make it feel so empty. This is almost like a super priceless moment in time and we're never gonna be able to go back. That is finding the good in the situation. When we return, the bad in the situation, primarily my haircut over the weekend, next. Anybody else try a haircut at home over the weekend? So my wife got out our late dog Porter's old clippers and decided to give it a try for the first time. So she started in the back, and that was probably a good thing uh, because it appears that watching a single YouTube video on how to cut hair is a poor substitute for actually knowing how to cut your husband's hair. 
Uh, she took a couple patches out of the back of the head, so we decided that, you know, we're just going to basically leave the sides and, and not touch the, the top and the front at all. So basically, I'm just going to look more and more like a cockatoo as the weeks go on. It's just going to be this, this plumage in the front that kind of hangs down. Love this note from Jeff, who says, Big thanks to the bank. Went in wearing mask, gloves, goggles, said I needed money. Instead of being tackled by security, they said, Have a nice day, sir. Thanks to the bank employees. For my home to yours, I'll see you next time.